Hi guys, this is Chantal and today I'm going to be giving these trees a little bit of a pruning. I already pruned them earlier this season in February and typically this is not the time I would be pruning trees. This is the end of March. We're about to enter April in just a couple days. So I wouldn't normally prune them at this time because I want to prune them while they're dormant so that I don't encourage them to go crazy and produce lots of branching uh, when I do prune them. But the reason why I'm pruning them right now is because when I was pruning them the first time in February, I didn't have a ladder with me and there was snow on the ground. So I, w I didn't really want to put a ladder uh, to reach up the tall branches. And if I show you this tree over here and I take you all the way up, you can see all the branches, how high they are. And the same with these apple trees over here on this side. We got a lot of tall branches that we really don't want. Oh, there we go. Is that the apple tree? See that? The goal that we have with our fruit trees is that we want to be able to reach the fruit easily. And if we need a ladder, the maximum ladder that we would want is a small ladder, a small step ladder that allows us to reach the fruit. We don't want to be uh, reaching super high into the trees because we want to be able to maintain them easily and reach the fruit easily. If we, we don't want it to be cumbersome to us. So my plan is to just uh, chop off about a third of the branches, uh, a third off the top of the branches that are shooting up uh, just to kind of give it size control. I'm not going to be removing any branches. I already thinned it out uh, a lot uh, this season and I don't want to do any more thinning because if I prune a lot off of it, that is going to encourage a lot of growth and then you will end up with water sprouts, which are the branches that are shooting straight up and you'll end up with those all over the tree. So I also see on this uh, pear tree over here, a branch that looks like it has some disease on it. So while I'm pruning, if I see a branch like this on the same tree that I'm pruning, I have some alcohol swipes with me, um, alcohol wipes with me, not swipes, uh, and I'm going to be cleaning my shears, my pruning shears with them. I probably, I probably should get some loppers too for the thick branches and I'll clean the loppers with these as well. You also want to clean your shears or your loppers, whatever you're using for pruning, to uh, what, uh, when you move from one tree to the next because if any of the trees have any diseases on them you don't want to transmit that disease to the next tree so you can use alcohol i typically use an alcohol spray bottle with just uh, 70 or 90 percent alcohol and i spray my pruning shears the the blades with that or i use an alcohol swab right now i can't find my spray bottle and i'm not going to look for it so i'm just using these uh, these alcohol wipes. Uh, you can also use a bleach solution. I don't know exactly the amount of the bleach solution. Maybe like it's 5% bleach to 95% uh, water. I'm not exactly sure. You can Google it and uh, see what, uh, how the amount of bleach that you should put in, in the water. And then you could just dip your pruning shears in it and uh, that disinfects them. The buds right now are starting to swell. Uh, and that's okay. I just want to size control it a little bit. We're not going to be doing doing tons of pruning. So let's go ahead and start pruning these trees. I already have a video on how to prune pears and apple trees and I'll link that down in the description box below but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a close-up on where I'm pruning these branches. These that you see over here are actually the fruit spurs. Uh, these uh, they stick out a little bit off the branch and then there's a bud on them. This is where the fruit comes so I'm not going to be cutting any of these. I'm only cutting the branches that are growing tall and if there are any branches that are interlinking or heading inside the tree that's what I'm pruning so that uh, because we don't want uh, the tree to grow too thickly on the inside that's going to cause a lot of disease and mold issues. So here we are. You see this branch over here it's growing super tall so uh, I'm going to take my pruners and look for a bud that's facing outside of the tree. It could be either this way or that way. So I have 
this butt over here that's going to be facing in this direction uh, I, that's going to be going in the direction of the raised bed so I don't want that to happen I'm going to cut it in this over the bud that's facing in that direction this way because that direction is far from the raised beds and uh, uh, so I don't want it to uh, head in that way so so that it doesn't hang over the raised beds and block their sunlight so we're gonna cut it over here so that's another reason why I'm cutting these so right over the bud you leave about a, a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch make your cut clean and simple and if you have anything that has that's uh, thicker than what your pruners can cut you need to use uh, some loppers so that you don't injure the branch so this one uh, we'll just pick one I'm gonna pick this one over here okay and that's all it is that's what I'm doing I'm just taking about a third almost off the tree uh, because it's just it's growing too tall and um, we want to make sure that our raised beds on this side over here get enough sunlight and we want, and we want it to be easy to manage That branch that had the disease on it, I just uh, cut it completely off because there was no good spot to cut it and it looked like the disease was about to spread all the way down. Hopefully it's not flower blight, it looks like it has some black spots on it. Maybe it's just some bugs that burrowed in there, but uh, I don't want to risk it. I did spray with fungicide and I put out a video on that also. I'll be linking, it, linking that video down in the description box below. Uh, if you want to learn more about organic fungicides and how to use them so hopefully I'm just hoping that there is uh, nothing wrong with this tree this season is super busy I'm hoping to be able to plant some vegetables today in the vegetable garden but I don't have high hopes because there's some dirt that I also need to move uh, I'll probably do that instead if I have any more time uh, today I think is March 30th is it March 30th today yeah, yeah uh, so today is March 30th and uh, it's really late for us uh, usually um, I'm gonna stand in the raised beds over here usually I am able to plant a little bit earlier but this year we got tons of heavy snow in March uh, we still we do always get snow in March but uh, this season has been uh, super heavy uh, and it delayed the planting time a little bit, but that's okay. I was hoping to be able to plant in the beginning of March. That was my plan. I had it all set out on the um, uh, on my uh, garden planner. So that's going to push things a little bit uh, further away, and, uh, and maybe the spring vegetables might might kind of uh, interlock with the uh, warm weather vegetables. I'm already also starting to see mayflies over here. It's not even May yet just go away <laughs> I don't want you here uh, anyway so uh, that's that's gonna make things a little bit more challenging I feel like and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to plant all the things that I wanted to plant for spring but I'm gonna try because my priority is really the summer plantings and I had an accident happen yesterday where a lot of the flowers that I planted in the tub method the perennial flowers uh, the tub got blown over by the wind it was a very high wind and it uh, and it to flip the tub over tub over over and uh, all the dirt was everywhere so I 
it's not on. It's not on. So I think that I believe that I'm going to have to replant these uh, plants again. Um, I still have the pots and the labels and everything. I just put it back all again in there. I was getting a couple hollyhocks germinated, and I think if this did not happen, probably the other stuff were going to germinate in the, just the next few days. So I'm gonna have to plant all that again. Uh, no stratification, unfortunately, unless if, with exception for the weather that we are getting now, because uh, today is a really nice day, actually. I think it's in the 50s, but we are getting some days in the 20s and in the 30s. So I think that should be sufficient enough for the things that require some stratification. Unfortunately, it's really sad. So. Um, I just hope something germinates from that. Uh, so that's my update on that. I'm just gonna finish right now all these trees and then we'll head over there. All this time I thought I was recording, turns out I was not recording. I finished pruning, uh, pruning most of these trees. I still have one more tree, uh, which is uh, a small pear tree. I need to just prune the top off of it. And I uh, didn't do much pruning, just size control them. Also, if you are doing this, I suggest you wear a hat and some glasses, some protective glasses, because the branches kept falling on my head and getting caught up in my hair. They didn't hurt, they just, you know, they were pulling on my hair and stuff and uh, you just have to make sure nothing goes in your eyes uh, and all that. So wear protective gear, uh, don't do as I do. <laughs> it's starting to drizzle a little bit. What I really want to do is fertilize these trees and I'm hoping to do it before it start, starts to rain. Looks like it's about to rain. So uh, I have a lot of branches on the ground. I think I'm just gonna grab the rake and quickly clean up the branches and put the fertilizer around the trees. And when you are putting fertilizer, just in case if I'm not able to record this on video, when you are fertilizing your trees, you wanna fertilize it in the early spring or mid to early spring season, season before the trees start to bud and put on some growth. You want to put your fertilizer around the outer rim of the tree where the branches would naturally extend to at the end of where that is to not to where you prune them but to where they were originally uh, because that's where the most active roots are you can also dig some holes around the tree where uh, around the perimeter of the tree where you are going to put your fertilizer and instead of putting it on the, on the top of the soil you can put it in those holes uh, I haven't done that uh, because that requires a lot more work and I don't have the the tools to do that right now I don't feel like doing it I'm just going to uh, 
sprinkle it around the trees and what I do also is I just kind of scratch it with my foot into the into the soil the soil over here is super soft so it doesn't need that much work really I just kind of go around the tree and scratch it with my foot into the soil even though there's grass around them they're totally fine also what I'm going to be doing this season we have a huge pile of mulch from our pine tree and our spruce tree that we cut down last fall, this last fall, uh, because uh, the pine tree, I think, was just starting to kind of splay out and one huge branch fell out and we didn't want that thing around because our kids are, were always around it, they were climbing all over it, so uh, that was their favorite tree. It was my favorite tree as well, but uh, it's... Uh, it was necessary to take it down unfortunately uh, and then the spruce tree was right next to it and half of that spruce tree was totally dead because it was interlocking with a pine tree so thankfully uh, the person that we hired to uh, cut down that tree for us he also went through the work and cut down the tree into little chunks and he mulched it all out so I'm super thankful that he did that for us uh, that is a huge help I always want I always need mulch in the garden uh, so that mulch is going to go around these trees just so that they can uh, have a layer of protection in the summer to uh, provide them with more moisture i will be putting irrigation also for these trees and i'll film a video on that once that season is here when it warms up a little bit because right now putting out irrigation is super hard because the pipes are tight and uh, it's just really hard when you do it during the season you kind of have to push them together super you have to put a lot of force to get them to fit together so I will be putting down first a layer of cardboard and then a layer of the mulch around the trees I might put compost we'll see I don't know I might get some uh, cow manure from the store and put that down that's something I might do or maybe just some organic compost uh, I might do that some organic backed compost put it all around the trees uh, because I feel like that would help them uh, they don't necessarily need it per se but the apple trees are not fruiting as well as I want them to uh, they are barely fruiting and these apple trees were here before we came they're planted super close together I feel like I need to like espalier them or something so that they're not interlocking together because it's super hard to prune them this way it really looks like it's about to rain so all I might be able to do is just to gather these branches. I got some organic fertilizer. I'm going to be using tree tone to put it around the trees. So let's go ahead and do it. It stopped drizzling. Hopefully I'll be able to finish all the trees before it starts raining again. All these trees that you see here were planted before we moved in. I believe they're planted in absolutely the most wrong place they could have been planted in, but we're using them. We're uh, trying our best to keep them healthy. That peach tree that you saw me put some fertilizer on is on its last leg. It's about to die. I believe it is full of bores. I have been spraying it and I have been pruning it and all that but it's been dying since the moment we got into we got to this house it's been leaning and it had boring insects in it and all that it's been uh, really str a struggle it has been fruiting and putting on a lot of fruit but it's just not healthy so I will be planting some more peach trees and such in the front I'll also as we expand our property around the perimeter I'll be planting some more fruit trees around the perimeter in the
proper places where they will receive a lot of sunlight and also where they would not be sitting in boggy soil because this place over here uh, is where our well is so and this place gets super soggy in the spring and in the fall uh, actually early spring it's all water in here it's like a swamp uh, shallow of course but it's just full of water so it's really not ideal for having uh, trees in here unless they are trees that really love the water like a willow for example which I am planning on planting a willow back in the corner in that corner over there once we clean that area and right now it is uh, full of thorn bushes and bittersweet vine and poison ivy and all that and it's like a deer highway over here from that corner and the other corner over there between us and our neighbors uh, that's uh, where the deer come and go and it's right next to the vegetable garden so I'm thinking maybe one day uh, in the far future we might put a fence around the vegetable garden and we might not I don't know we'll see uh, but for now it is serving us uh, it's working for us and it has this fence that we have around here the electric fence has been working fine to protect the vegetable garden from the deer uh, we'll see this season how it does. It has been uh, just uh, uh, shorting a lot because it's touching the grass, so we will have to fix that. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be leaving a couple videos for you over here. One about pruning the trees and the other one, I don't know about what. We'll figure it out as we go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.